Uh, how is it going? We are covering uh, administration and governance. And when we are doing that, we take a look at UK and the way how uh, there are some systems, right? Uh, myself, I never knew that uh, there are very particular systems uh, uh, or paid attention at any of those systems. Uh, or thought it worth taking a look and try to understand some of those systems, how some of those governance are governed, right? So, uh, myself, I think those systems are very old and not necessarily effective that it can be. When it comes to opinions, feelings, there's too much mess, right? And perhaps this particular system or, or any system might be worth taking a look at from a fresh point of view. And perhaps you know, there might be reason why might be more people might be interested in engaging different systems by perhaps looking to build better systems, and in particular that with a lot of advancements coming to effect when we're taking a look at technology. I personally believe uh, biometric data that can be potentially stored and collected on your phone, you, you could use that to vote for yourself instead of perhaps having those systems in place. I would like to make an argument there. While I'm doing that, let's try to understand the way how it's currently been done. Now I have a complete breakdown of how it's currently been done. I'll try to glaze over, uh, perhaps not go too much into detail about particular subjects worth taking a look at, feel free to do your own research. This is the way uh, how I'm going to be covering this area. Perhaps it's worth taking a look at and break it down you know, with a full you know, five hour video. <laughs> For people who are interested, there might be some interest of doing that. Or perhaps myself, I'm going to be doing a quick dive of 10 minute videos. Let's take a look at a single member constituency system uh, in uh, context of United Kingdom. It's something that I'll start with since it happens to be I'm in United Kingdom. <laughs> it just happens to be. Uh, there was a... Uh... <laughs> Uh, that, where else would you start, right? Let's start with UK and progress into perhaps other governments as well. And take a look at perhaps there are some good examples of that as well. But let's start with UK. Uh, in the United Kingdom, electoral system commonly referred to as the first past the post uh, VPTP, which is type of single member constituency system. Let's do a uh, complete breakdown and try to understand everything what will be involved in uh, the system and operations of the system. I'll start with very broad areas without going too much into detail and from there perhaps working a look at uh, and try to understand a little bit deeper. Broadly, time constraint <laughs> subject, let's, uh, let's start with that. Oh, yeah. uh, const uh, uh, point number one, constituencies. The country is divided into geographical areas called constituencies. So that's how people decided to govern it. So it would perhaps reflect the people within those areas, right? So based on your postcode or your geographical location, perhaps where you live, right? So there would be a part of how you can take part in this kind of system based on your location within the United Kingdom. Each constituency elects one member of parliament or MP to represent them in the House of Commons, which is, which is kind of great. I have pointed that out uh, very recently. I'm currently looking at a uh, live feed of what's happening there. It's kind of great, I guess. Uh, I'm paying way too much attention at what's happening somewhere else without paying too much attention at UK. So it's a kind of note for myself that I should pay more attention when it comes to governance and the way how even right now, a uh, quick note, I, I like to keep keep it brief, right? We're looking to subsidize some of the expenses when it comes to uh, how much would be spent on uh, energy costs, right? So we're looking to put a bandage. So current government is looking to put a bandage by subsidies instead of developing new systems. So even there, so I, I don't know, I will be frustrated very fast. So <laughs> we're looking to subsidize those businesses and support for those businesses by offering subsidies. So in other words, we're putting bandage on this problem without solving this problem. 
So this is what this government is doing. <laughs> so that's a quick note uh, that I have spent, I don't know, like two or three minutes of watching parliament with the UK making laws. Great. <laughs> Let's vote for more of those people. Let's bring more of those people in the house. Or house of commons. <laughs> Let's bring more people in there <laughs> who with the bandage problem solving solutions. <laughs> Uh, let's take a look at point number two, candidates. How can we uh, elect more of those bandage, problem solving, uh, attitude, having uh, politics to the uh, House of Commons, uh, who are looking to address problems in this particular manner, uh, with the bandage problem solving, instead of resolving uh, core issues <laughs> and subsidizing. Uh, yeah. uh, number two, candidates. Political parties in Independent candidates nominated individuals to run to uh, for election in each constituency. So there's a uh, political parties or independent candidates, right, right, right. So it's part of the party and perhaps there is a leader of the party, I guess. At least that's how I'm understanding it. Each candidate competes to win the most votes in their representative constituency. So it's uh, like kind of to be elected as a leader, perhaps you need to do great things. Or how how it works? I, I don't know who has been uh, elected. <laughs> I don't know everything. Let's let's delve a little bit deeper. So that's candidate, right? One person for one uh, uh, postcode regional, and he's been elected based on the size of that region. All of those good things, right? So one candidate. Uh, from there, we're progressing to number three. That would be voting. Votes in each constituency can. Uh, Voters in each constituency can vote for one candidate only. One person, one vote. Great. Uh, it's, it's, it might be too complicated. I'll try to keep it brief as possible. The candidate with the most votes in constituency wins the bec or becomes the, uh, the MP for that area. Most votes, person wins. Very good. I like it. So far, so good. Number four. Winner takes all. Okay, okay, relax. <laughs> I like uh, proportional representation systems. Uh, let's stick to uh, without going into much deeper, uh, deeper in all these details. Winner takes all. One person, uh, uh, one person can cast one vote and vote for one person, and uh, who gets the most votes, the person will win. The candidate with the most votes in consistency will win, even if he do not have the absolute majority, more than 50%. That would be majority, right? Even if he doesn't have it, most votes will win. Number five, majority government. PPTP often leads to a clear majority of one political party in the House of Commons. The party with the most MPs can form a government and its leader usually becomes a prime minister. Oh, okay, so it's on. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So I, I kind of get it, I guess. So it's kind of like uh, that makes a little bit more sense. So that's how we would structure those kind of systems, right? Uh, to make it more perhaps balanced, let's uh, touch on critics and controversies with this particular system, right? Critics argue that uh, FPTP can lead to a lack of proportionality where a party may win the majority of seats without winning the majority of votes nationwide. It can result in vested votes for those who vote for losing candidates in a constituency as their votes do not contribute to the overall seats distribution. Uh, recently, uh, there are different structures, right? I don't want to mislead everyone, or perhaps let's focus on this. But there are within Europe, even right now, as we speak, there are some parties who have won and they have a completely different structure. Uh, let's n n do not bring those into the mix. It's all very complex. Let's stick with this system, right? So this, that's a system. Number seven, stability and accountability. Ooh, I like that. I like it now. <laughs> Accountability, someone. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I like it. I don't know. So there's a lot of opinions out there. I like when people have been held accountable for something that they are doing. FPTP is often praised for its simplicity and the ability to produce stable majority governments. Okay, 
votes, uh, voters know uh, which party is likely to form the government. And this system can provide a clear link between constituencies and their elected representatives. Okay. I don't know how they can predict that. I have no idea how they can predict those kind of things. And who gonna form? I have no idea how they can predict that. But uh, what I'm saying, simplicity, I like that. <laughs> and accountability so far. <laughs> so far, I like it. But, uh, perhaps worth revisiting some of those uh, concepts. But either way, so far, so good. Uh, I have published a book. Game strategy within this book, I'm taking a look at different areas which I personally believe uh, would be very important to understand, in particular, when uh, operating or starting a business and or allocating all the resources. That would be some of those areas which I personally believe would be very important. Then thinking about the business and what would be some of those reasons why anyone would or should start a business to be more perhaps independent if uh, perhaps it's something that you would like to do in the future in particular when it comes to managing your own time right so focusing on business and perhaps having a little bit more control of your time your resources and the way how you uh thinking about the future perhaps is for some but not necessarily for all of those people right so it's a business right related but any of you who are interested there's a qr code in the corner as well as company's website below number eight and the last point constituency boundary review constituency boundaries are periodically reviewed and may be redrawn for reflection of changes in population and demographics which is good i have done enough uh, enough research to understand what's happening within the us for whatever reason so i don't know what the, the way how they're drawing those within the us and the controversy when it comes from that Hopefully, uh, within UK, uh, they're keeping nice, simple, and clean. Hopefully, uh, that's uh, <laughs> but how can you, uh, myself or anyone, hold those people accountable, right? And uh, just to summarize this video, right? Understanding the single member constituency system in UK involves recognition that the local nature of elections, so the importance of individual constituencies and the winner takes all mechanism that determines the outcome of each constituency. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. It's kind of cool, I guess, that that's the way how it's structured, right, when it comes to some of the systems and how uh as a whole would be the uk would be governed so yeah okay so this is what we have to work with thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one